I thought my jokes were bad. The Joker in The Dark Knight looks different from the other Jokers that came before. Other Jokers have fixed or painted on smiles, but Heath Ledger's Joker has scars that extend his smile into a freakish sight. The Joker gives a few conflicting explanations for how he got his scars. First, he says he got them from his abusive father. He comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. In his second story, he says he gave himself the scars after his wife was disfigured by loan sharks. I just want her to know that I don't care about the scars. So, I stick a razor in my mouth and do this to myself. Later, he's about to tell Batman a third story of how he got his scars, but he never gets the chance. You know, you know how I got these scars? No, but I know how you got me. Before we go on, we want to talk a little about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a superb online learning community with thousands of classes about everything. Vlogging, cinematography, even painting with watercolors. Click the link in the description below to get two months access to all classes for free. It was a calculated move on director Christopher Nolan's part to never give a concrete reason for the Joker's scars. Nolan has said, quote, in narrative terms, we didn't want to humanize him. We didn't want to show his origins, show what made him do the things he's doing because then he becomes less threatening. The Joker embodies anarchy and destruction that can't be controlled or understood. So the conflicting stories of how he was scarred refuse to give us a resolution to that chaos. I try to show the schemers how pathetic their attempts to control things really are. The scars have multiple symbolic meanings throughout the story. The grotesque twist on a clown's red mouth visually reflects a sense of humor taken to a sick, horrifying extreme, which is the Joker's trademark. Why so serious? The Joker likes to toy with his victims and treat his killings like a game. If Coleman Reese isn't dead in 60 minutes, then I blow up a hospital. Batman is one of the most serious, noirish superheroes out there. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. So the Joker's scars mark him as the antidote to all the doom and gloom. Yet, even though the scars approximate a smile, Now I'm always smiling. If we look closer, this is a terrifyingly unhappy face. The Joker's scars also represent a perversion of love. A key similarity in the two Scar stories he tells is the relationship element. Both anecdotes describe a twisted relationship in which the Joker didn't get the love he was seeking. In the first story, his father, who should have been a protective presence, only wanted to hurt him. My father was a drinker and a fiend. And one night, he goes off crazier than usual. And in the second story, he disfigured himself for his wife, but his strange romantic gesture backfired. She can't stand the sight of me. So through these stories, the Joker is saying his scars weren't just physical. He's connecting them to an emotional trauma. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. He does the same thing to Harvey Dent implementing physical scars that are tied to emotional ones. Harvey is disfigured and his girlfriend Rachel dies in the accident orchestrated by the Joker. They told me that only one of us was gonna make it and that they were gonna let our friends choose. So we can see that the Joker uses violence as a game to break people both physically and emotionally. He wanted to prove that even someone as good as you could fall. And he was right. Once Dent becomes Two-Face, he has a tactic of flipping a coin to decide whether to kill someone. The world is cruel. And the only morality in a cruel world is chance. This is exactly like something the Joker would do. It's totally random, a combination of a lighthearted game and a terrible violence. So the Joker succeeds in remaking the idealistic do-gooder Harvey in his own image. 
I took Gotham's white knight, and I brought him down to our level. At the same time, the idea that the Joker's own scars are tied to emotional trauma comes only from the stories the Joker tells. So this makes that explanation completely suspect. The Joker himself isn't broken by his scars the way Harvey is. He takes a perverse pleasure in his scars. So it seems overwhelmingly likely the Joker did this to himself, and not for love, but to express an identity that he's proud of. What's funny is that the Joker is the one who's obsessed with telling stories of how he got his scars. He brings it up to potential victims time and time again. You wanna know how I got these scars? You wanna know how I got them? You know how I got these scars? So clearly his scars are something he likes to focus on. And through his storytelling, he's playing with his victims' human need for logical explanations and answers, only to reveal there are none. He's mocking the convention of the traumatic incident that turns someone into a supervillain, and he's rejecting the idea that anything caused him to be this way. The Joker's scarred smile also comes from some realistic inspirations. The Chelsea Headhunters gang in Britain was known for inflicting these kinds of scars, which were called a Chelsea smile. The Dark Knight's prosthetic supervisor, Connor O'Sullivan, said he was partly inspired by punk and skinhead aesthetics. Punk subculture is all about being anti-establishment and not conforming, but the Joker embodies that sense of chaos and rebellion in the darkest possible way. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. The main thing we know about the Joker's scars is that he sees them as an asset, a psychological element in his violent, fear-inspiring game. The Joker wants to break people, to convince them that their society is illogical and meaningless. Some men just want to watch the world burn. And these strange, unexplained scars are his way of proving to people that their world is Insane. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? Hey guys, I'm Alani, the newest member of the Screen Prism team. This is Gabrielle Noguez. Gabrielle is a filmmaker who's worked as a senior creative at GoPro. He also worked with The Weeknd to create the short film One Night with The Weeknd. And Gabrielle teaches a class on making short films, on Skillshare. This class is about capturing the cinematic moment. And we're gonna talk about different elements that constitute filmmaking. This is why we love Skillshare service. The classes are taught by amazing, accomplished working professionals in design, photography, social media, business, entrepreneurship, and more. In fact, Skillshare has actually helped us at Screen Prism learn more about animation and design. They offer 20,000 classes about any skill you might want to learn, all for less than $10 a month. Right now, you can get two months access to all their classes for free, but that's only if you're one of the first 500 people who click the link in our description below. It's a great deal, so hurry up and don't miss out.